Well, thank you, Pastor Phil and Lucinda and all the team here. Just beyond honored to be guests here, but we also feel like family. And as uh, Pastor Phil said, in 2001, we came over here and to Bridal College. And it was where, back of there, they used to have classrooms up the top there we, where I met Chantel. But also I met what I would say is one of the finest local churches on the planet. And we are indebted to Hillsong Church. We would not be where we are today without the heritage, without the input, the investment. So can you thank Pastors Phil and Lucinda and all the team here? We are so, so grateful for you. And as Phil said, I was actually in walking across a car park on the way to get coffee at Gloria Jeans in 2007. I bumped into Phil and we just connected and our kind of season in the UK was coming to an end. He said, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, don't tell anyone, but we're moving to Cape Town, South Africa to start Hillsong. And so we didn't tell anyone. Um, but he said, we've got no money, no building, no job, no position, nothing. But do you want to come on an adventure? And we're so glad we joined you on that adventure. It was the craziest. And when we, all, when we reflect back on our lives, there's some of the best memories we ever had serving under you guys. So thank you for your love and support. And we love this church. And thank you to so many of you, George and Nabi and Donna and Stephen. And son, you, you know, I was thinking about this church. You, you guys are steadfast and movable, yeah. always abounding in the work of the Lord. And so, so grateful just to look around this place and see so many of you who've just stood the course of time. So we love you. So Father God, we thank you today for your goodness and your grace towards us. Where would we be without the steadfast love of the Lord this morning? Where would we be, Lord? We just say so grateful that your mercies never come to an end. They are new today. So Lord, we come around your word. Speak to us. I know for many, this will be their first time, Father, in church. And Lord, I pray that you would have something new, fresh for them. But others have been attending church maybe for decades, Lord, and you'd want to speak to them as well. So speak to us, Father, whatever our season, whatever our generation today, by the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You can take your seats. I want to shout out to all the various extension services joining us across Australia today, especially to Macquarie, Pastors Tom and Angela Backley used to babysit their children, and um, we used to put donuts down their neck around 11 o'clock at night, and they loved it. So sorry about that, Tom. All right, I'm going to share a word today I believe that God has given me specifically for Hillsong Church. Matthew chapter 14, we're going to read two back-to-back -back stories, and the first one is a little bit morbid. The second one is definitely a lot happier. The first one is the death of John the Baptist. What a happy way to start Sunday. It says in verse 3, Herod had arrested and imprisoned John as a favor to his wife Herodias, the former wife of Herod's brother Philip. John had been telling Herod, it is against God's law for you to marry her. Herod wanted to kill John, but he was afraid of a riot because all the people believed John was a prophet. But at a birthday party for Herod, Herodias' daughter performed a dance that greatly pleased him. Moving on. So he promised with a vow to give her anything she wanted. At her mother's urging, the girl said, I want the head of John the Baptist on a tray. Then the king regretted what he'd said, but because of the vow he'd made in front of his guest, he issued the, issued the necessary orders. So John was beheaded in prison, and his head was brought on a tray and given to the girl who took it to her mother. Later, John's disciples came for his body and buried it. They went and told Jesus what had happened. Verse 13, as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left alone in a boat to a remote area to be alone, but the crowds heard where he was and headed on foot to follow him from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowds as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed the sick. The story goes on, as many of you would be familiar with, to Jesus feeds the 5,000. Back-to-back stories in Scripture, often when we read back-to-back -back stories, we can forget about the emotional connection, the emotional bridge between the two stories. What hits me most about the story of the feeding of the 5,000 isn't just the miracle, but it's the timing of the miracle. At this particular time, Jesus would not have been in a very good emotional state. This is only one of five times that Jesus shows raw human emotion in Scripture. John the Baptist and Jesus were cousins. They could have grown up together, hung out, climbed trees, fished together, childhood memories. 
John had baptized Jesus just a few months earlier in the Jordan. Who knows it's always special when family baptize you. As a pastor of a dad or a a, a friend comes and says, hey, I'd love to baptize my son. I always give them that privilege to baptize because it's such a a precious moment. And Jesus, uh, Jesus was baptized by John because they had this connection. And so John had a special place in the life of Christ. But then John has his head whipped off at a birthday party for the price of a dance. Who knows that is brutal. And then they present John's head on a tray to Herod. And then this is what the Bible says. It says, they went and told Jesus what had happened. Who knows if you've ever received a phone call that a loved one has passed away or there's been a sudden tragedy in your family. Who knows that's a very difficult phone call to take. In that moment, Jesus received the call that his cousin had died. But not a natural death, a brutal death. And if any of us had heard that news, just like Jesus, we would go into shock. We would be enraged. We would probably feel sick. That's exactly what Jesus would have felt when they said that they went and told Jesus what had happened. Jesus would have been no different. Jesus would have been at an emotionally low space when he received the news. How do we know that? Because it says, as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to go to a remote place. His response was he wanted to be alone. Who knows when you've received bad news, when you're going through struggles, who knows sometimes you just want to be alone. You don't want to be in the public eye. You don't want to be talking to people at work. You just want to, to, to retract. And his response is he wanted to be alone. Yet a few hours later, Jesus is in a field teaching 5,000 people and feeding them. Often we can miss the bridge between the two stories. You see, I think the 5,000 people probably didn't care about Jesus' emotions in that moment. His feelings. They just needed help. They just wanted a good sermon. They just wanted some free food. But I think this, these two stories is actually a picture of life. Business, ministry, pastoring, leading. Sometimes life is tough. Sometimes it's even brutal. On one hand, there's a battle that Jesus is facing. On the other hand, the 5,000 are receiving a blessing. I want to talk for the next three and a half hours on battles and blessings. <laughs> that lady's looking at me going, is he serious? I'm really serious. Some of you are up watching box sets till early hours, so. Here's what serving Jesus looks like. Battles and blessings. Battles and blessings. I wish that serving Jesus was just blessing, 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 blessing. But serving Jesus is a simply a battle and another battle, an occasional blessing, and another little blessing, then a major battle. Does anyone think, are these battles ever going to stop? Emotional battles, physical battles, financial battles, family battles. Your mother-in-law comes over for lunch. You know what I'm talking about. Mine's watching. Hi, Cindy. (laughs) There's going to be times in life, in ministry, as you lead teams, as you study in life where God requires of us To keep going about doing good even when you're feeling bad. Here's what Jesus did. He went about doing good even when he was feeling bad. Imagine if Jesus had asked himself how he felt in that moment. The demand was the crowds wanted food. The demand was they wanted a message Imagine if Jesus had asked himself in that moment, how do I feel about this? I think he would have felt, well, I think he would have deserved not to go out that day. But Jesus went about doing good even when he was feeling bad. There's going to be times in life that you're going to be on the mountain and it's blessing. I feel so blessed today. I feel blessed to be back here in Australia after being here for two years. I feel blessed seeing so many of your amazing faces. I feel blessed the fact we get to lift our hands in the freedom of the West world to praise. I feel blessed today. Hillsong Church, 
It's blessing time. I mean, it's even warm in winter. I mean, yesterday I'm like getting tanned. It's like someone said it's like just coming into spring. I mean, this is a summer's day in, in the UK. Trust me, a summer's day, and it's cloudy. But you know what? Life and church and business is not always like this. And I want to speak right now to some of you because you're in the heat of the battle. And just maybe God requires us to keep in the battle so we can receive the blessing. So many people fall away from faith and church because they think the battle is a full stop. I want you to know today the battle is a comma in your life, not a full stop. God has something outside and on the other end of the battle. Nearly eight years ago, we started on our project, as Pastor Phil mentioned, for our new building. And it was a dream. I remember it was just a dream. We came over to Australia and I visited Duty Street. I stole the architectural plans. <laughs> Saved us some good money. Cheers. And I took them home. I said, imagine if we could build this in England. And we got it priced up and it came in at seven million. And everybody went into shock. Well, we just, the final bill was 14 and a half million. Because we went through, yeah, pounds. Pounds, that's like times, it used to be times three. Remember we used to sing that song, we get three dollars to the pound. That's about 1.8, but it doesn't quite work. We get 1.8 dollars to the pound. Da, 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 da. Anyway, I need to stay on track. But it couldn't be a worse time in history to build a new church. War broke out on our continent. We hit this thing called covid and then this thing in the UK called nutrient neutrality kicked in, which stopped everyone building for 12 months. And it couldn't be a worse time in history. And we went from battle to battle to battle. But today in Soul Church in England, in a few hours when they wake up, guess what? They're going to be enjoying the blessing. And sometimes in life, you just got to keep pushing through the battles. You got to keep pushing through, even when you're physically low, emotionally low, spiritually low. You got to stay in the battle because there is a blessing on the other end. I think Jesus had a right to say to the crowd that day, I'm just going to sleep in. I need a rest. Yeah, he kept going about doing good. And the feeding of the 5,000 hung on the fact that Jesus battled his feelings so others could enjoy the blessing. I don't know what Jesus felt like that day when he stood up and preached, but I wouldn't have wanted to be in those shoes. Sometimes what feels bad is the very thing that God is using to propel us for the good. And here's what I realized about Jesus. Jesus never allowed his emotional life to dominate his spiritual life. Sometimes we allow our emotions, and we all have emotions, and sometimes we don't even know why we're feeling bad, we're just feeling bad. Sometimes we allow it to dominate our spiritual lives. And why, not, why am I speaking this message today? Because life doesn't always play along. We've seen that in the last few years. Church, business, school, university, our world, people disappoint us, life disappoints us, church disappoints us, leaders disappoint us, our careers, our plans, all those things, they, they don't go in the direction that we want. And life doesn't always feel good. Maybe we need to stop asking ourselves this question, how do I feel? Imagine if Jesus had asked himself that day, how would I feel? We would not be enjoying the miracle of 5,000. That's my kid's favorite story in the Bible. But Jesus had to push past the battle of how do I feel? He had to override his feelings with his conviction that God had called him to it. We've got to keep going about doing good, Hillsong Church, even when we're feeling bad. There's going to be moments in our lives where we don't feel it. There's going to be moments in our lives when we don't feel like coming to church. We don't feel like rocking up to a small group. We don't feel like serving. And God says, I just need you to keep pushing past your feeling. It's called the call. The call of the kingdom. In 2021, like Hillsong, we run a Christmas show called, ours is called The Wonder. And we have around 10,000 people who come through the doors of our church for The Wonder. And it's across two weekends. And 
Chantelle always plays a lead part. Didn't she lead worship with the team so beautifully? You can't keep her. And she was, she was playing a, what was the role you played in The Wonder? Chiquita Banana Lady. A very spiritual role. And she was singing Feliz Navidad or something like that, one of the Spanish classics. And she, in the middle of the, in the, middle of the, in the, on the Saturday on, on, on week two, I get a phone call from her, from her godfather. She was raised by her godparents in America. And she, he said, I've got some tragic news. She said her godbrother's taken an overdose and died. This is in the middle of the Christmas show, the happiest time of year. And I said, okay. I said, Papa Ted, just leave that with us. We're gonna, I'm going to speak to Chantal. And I pulled Chantal in, into our office. And I said, Chantal, I've got some terrible news. I said, your godbrother, who she grew up with like a brother, has tragically lost his life. And in that moment, she broke down, as you would, in her emotions. And I held her and she cried. And for the next hour, and I said, Chantel, you, you just need to go home now. And we need to process this. She looked at me. She said, John, this right now is not about what I feel, but what God's called me to do. She said, I'm going to push past this for the sake of those out there who need to hear the message of Jesus. And I'll never forget it. It's one thing getting up at Christmas after hearing that news and singing, Oh, Holy Night. It's another thing having to get up in a very kind of comedy role. And she overrode her feelings. And she pulled into something called conviction. And she mourned at a later day. And she mourned and she processed. And she got counseling through this. But we saw so many people that we can find Jesus for the first time. And I want to encourage you. There are times in life. There are times where we have to keep going about doing good even when we're feeling bad. Even when we're feeling bad and someone needs to hear this today. Because some of you are thinking about quitting. Some of you are thinking about giving up, even giving up on church or giving up on faith. Giving up, but God is saying, we've got to keep going. It's not about what we feel. It's about what God has called us to do. My mom who's watching... She's been in the same church for 55 years. She's had 101 reasons to leave and be offended and be upset. But she just keeps showing up every week in the good days and the not so good days. When times are great and when times aren't so good. Because you've got to just keep going. So the question we have in our remaining two and a half hours is, how do we go about... I don't know why everyone's laughing. How do we go about doing good even when at times we feel bad? From this passage, actually, Jesus leaves us a blueprint. A blueprint. How to lead us through the seasons of, of battles and blessings. The first, the first blueprint is this. Is that it says that Jesus went to the Father. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area. To be alone with his father. He got alone with his father, not his feelings. Jesus understood the difference between solitude and isolation. Solitude is you getting alone with God. Isolation is you getting alone with you. There is a big difference. Jesus constantly got away by himself. Why? To be with his father. Not to tweet. Not to swipe. Not to wallow in hurt. No, he went to pray to speak to the Father. And when I've been disappointed and hurt, I've been tempted to get alone with me. It's dangerous. Isolation is always dangerous. But solitude is always rewarding. And if all we want to do is watch box sets, eat Tim Tams, and by the way, they're very good, and sleep and swipe, it's called isolation. But Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he said, come to me. An invitation, all you are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will, it's a promise. It's a promise, I will give you rest. Rest from what? The battle. God is calling you right now. Many of you, he's calling you to the Father. He wants to speak to you. It's interesting, the Bible says he left to a remote area. I want to ask you, do you have a remote area? 
a remote area where you can get away from the distractions, the disappointments, the chaos of life where you can just retreat and be with the Father. Because if Jesus needed to be alone with God, how much more do we need it? How much more, Hillsong Church? If we're going to go the distance in our journey of following Jesus, we need a remote space. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. I want to ask you, do you have a secret place? A place where you and God get to hang out and talk to each other. I'm not talking about looking at your phone for a verse of the day. I'm not talking about listening to your favorite speaker on a podcast. I'm talking about where you have intimacy with Christ where you tell God how you feel. God can handle your feelings. You know, Jesus, we don't know what Jesus said to the Father that day. We don't know if he was angry, upset, hurt. We don't know what he said. All we know is he needed to be with him. You know, sometimes people can't handle us. Even our spouses can't handle us. But Jesus can. That's why he says, come to me. Come to me. And some of you are burdened and you're carrying so much and you've been battle after battle, staff, finances, health. And Jesus is saying, the invitation today is come. Come to me. Jesus went to the Father. The second blueprint for us is this. Jesus walked in his anointing. I think Jesus in that moment, he remembered Luke chapter 4 where it says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Just like Jesus, we've been anointed. We've been anointed to bring the good news. We're anointed to keep bringing the good even when we're feeling bad. You know, the greatest moments I've felt the anointing have not been with a microphone in my hand. The greatest moments I've felt the anointing is when I felt like quitting. There's been times leading a church, it's brutal. It's brutal. People send you interesting emails, don't they, Phil? You wouldn't know, but I do. And they all start with them, we really love you, but. <laughs> when everyone sends me an email that says, we really love you, I know what's coming next. Anyway. But there's been times we think, is this worth it? But do you know what I remember? I remember 10 years ago when we were anointed to lead the church. And every time I felt like quitting, I remember the day we were anointed to do it. I remember when the Holy Spirit anointed us to lead. So we'd never fall back on our feelings, we fall back on our anointing. The God who called you is the God who'll keep you. I'm going to say that again. The God who's called you is the God who will keep you. If he's called you to that business, he will keep you in that business. When marriage feels tough, do you know what I do? I look at my wedding ring. Because it's a covenant that I made with Chantel. Do we have tough days? Of course we do. She's married to me, poor girl. <laughs> she just said, preach it. <laughs> but I remember the God who brought us together is the God who will keep us together. Very good. Don't walk away from that marriage. Oh, I'm not feeling it. You're not always going to feel it. You ain't always going to feel it. It's not always a bed of roses. But the conviction was what God has joined together, nothing can set us aside. So what do we do? We just keep walking. And here's what I've realized in marriage. When we don't see eye to eye, we keep walking hand in hand. So we're just walking hand in hand. We don't always see things eye to eye, but we're committed Come hell or high water, we're going to keep walking hand in hand. And for some of you, just because you're not seeing eye to eye, God is calling you to keep walking hand in hand. When I wonder how on earth we're going to pay off our mortgage on our new building, I remember the word that Pastor Tom Backley gave us on the day we announced it. He said, John, that building will be paid in full in Jesus' name. So what do we do? We fall back on the Word of God. We fall back on the conviction. We fall back on the commitment. You see, the anointing is the power of the Holy Spirit, which gives us the power of strength when we feel weak. He gives us the power when ours has run out. He gives us strength for today. The Holy Spirit gives us bright hope for tomorrow. You're anointed for that job. To every single parent out there, you're anointed. 
You're anointed for that leadership role. You're anointed in that business. The anointing, it sets us apart. It gives us a new gear. It gives us a new dimension. My grandma bought me a car when I was at university. It was a Saab. God bless the Swedes. Has anyone got a Saab? I'm going to show you rage if you do. Not many, want, not one person. Well, I did. <laughs> wow. Volvo. <clears throat> well, I got this Saab car for my birthday, and when I looked at it, it was an automatic car. It had a button on the top. It, it said S. I thought, what is that? Is that like a rapture button? You press it, and you know, I didn't know what it was, so I took it out on the highway. And I thought, I'm going to wait till late at night, and I pressed the S button. What the S, bus, S button was, was a supercharge button, which gave you an extra 1,000 horsepower in case you get stuck behind a tractor. Now, where I live, that's very common. <laughs> or even a horse. I mean, it has been known. And so you can press the button and go, Vroom. When I pressed that for the first time, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, John, that's exactly what the Holy Spirit can do in your life when you're stuck. When you feel like you've got nothing less, you can press the supercharge button. You can call upon me at any time. And I will give you wisdom. I will give you something supernatural that you don't have in your natural self. And there has been times over the last 10 years of leading church. And there is times I know in your life when we're going through the battles when we, and we can press the button. And the Holy Spirit literally can come upon us. And he can give us what we don't deserve. He can give us what we've not experienced. So I encourage you, you are anointed. Jesus was anointed that day to speak to the poor you know the anointing is what sets you apart in Psalm 45 verse 7 it says God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness this is a really this is a really great verse more above your companions which means when God's Holy Spirit rests upon you 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 are qualified the unqualified are qualified he gives you what you don't deserve. And God gives us something extra when we can't find it in ourselves. And God gave his son Jesus supernatural strength today to speak to the multitudes. Jesus was breaking on the inside so he could be a blessing to the multitudes on the outside. Do you know an egg can't be used until it's broken? Sometimes God has to break us. Sometimes things, we have to go through the battles and the breakings of life so God can use us. And there'll be days when you, when you parent, when you lead, when you sing, when you deliver at work and you have nothing and you might feel broken, but there is something that can kick in even deeper than you realize. I'm not talking about your gifting. I'm talking about the same spirit which raised Christ from the dead, lives inside of you never confuse your gift with the anointing. Never confuse it. The Bible says the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Your gift will never leave you. But the anointing is something we treasure. The anointing is something that's set apart. You see, our gifts impress people, but the anointing transforms people. And I'm not just talking about the platform. I'm talking about work. God wants to anoint you in your place of work. God wants to anoint you in your place of study. God wants to put things in your heart, dreams in your heart, seeds for the future. And I just want to say, Pastors Phil and Lucinda, you are so anointed for this time. Keep walking it. Don't lose your confidence. God's given you anointing to lead through storm. God is going to give you the wisdom to keep navigating the impossible. God is going to give strength. God is blowing fresh winds in the sails of this church. There's been battles and battles and battles, but there is a blessing season. It's a season of blessing that you're going to walk into. You see, anyone can enjoy the blessing season, but who can endure the battle? See, I can run away in the battle. People have run. But I want to encourage you, stay steadfast. Because in every, every season, in every place in life, there's battles. But God is watching the ones who stay firm and stand strong during the battle. There's a fresh anointing on this house. I want to encourage you, walk in your anointing church. On your days of blessing, on your days of battles, keep walking in the anointing. God anoints us on our good days for our battle days. Jesus went to the Father. Jesus walked in his anointing. And then as the team come up, Jesus moved with compassion. 
It says in verse 14, Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them. I think the last sight Jesus wanted to see as he was mourning the loss of his cousin was people. He was the one who needed help. He was the one who needed a free meal. You ever walked into church or walked into work feeling emotionally low and someone is waiting for you to download their problems? You know what I'm talking about? We've got people in our church and they're waiting for me at the car when I get there. They're waiting for me in my seat when I walk into church. I mean, they're just, they're just ready. And there are the days where, 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 when the last thing we need is other people's problems and pain. And I think Jesus would have felt that day because we've got our, enough of our own. Now I'm going to have a... Can I just be honest with you just for a sec? A few weeks ago, on a, we have a Monday off and we went out for a family meal and to do some shopping and we're walking through our city and on Monday, I just don't like to talk to people. I just want to be with my family because I'm like peopled out. And you're like, is he really a pastor? I am, I'm just being honest. So I am a pastor, yeah? <laughs> anyway, we're in the city and I see this guy from church. Chantel goes, there's such a... I said, yeah, yeah, let's go. <laughs> see, she's a real Christian. And I just stood on the other side of the road and Chantel left and she went over to talk to this guy and he's a vulnerable guy. I just, just didn't feel it. I'll be honest, I, just, I was like, no, I can't, I can't do another person. And I went back that night and I actually said sorry to God. This is where this message came from. It came out of that experience because I was no longer moved by people. Do you know what? Sometimes we can be in this for so long that this doesn't even move us anymore. And I went home, I said sorry to God. And I pray that church still moves us. I pray that people still move us. I pray the Bible doesn't just draw us, it still moves us. I pray we're not, I know for some of you, you've been, you've been coming for so long and we do, it's all like we do the same things all over, but I pray it still moves us. I pray that people still move us. Jesus, he would not have wanted to see anyone that day. He deserved the day off. He deserved a Netflix day and a Dunkin' Donut. That's what he deserved. Jesus, he went about doing good, even when he was feeling bad. I pray that all of us, if you're a, if you're a believer in Jesus, I pray that everyone in this room is in someone's crisis. Do you know if everyone cared for someone in this world, everyone would be cared for? Are you, are, you, are you part of a local church? Are you still moved by the local church? You know, there is no plan B for this earth. The local church is the plan. The bride of Christ is still the hope for humanity. It's not just enough to be part of it. We still need to be moved by it. If not, the Bible says we're just a clanging symbol. You see, when we first found faith, all of us, we were moved by it. I want to show you this graph. It's, it's a picture of years of walking with Christ. Statistics show in the first year of walking with Jesus, we tell 20 people, 20 people about our newfound faith, what Jesus had done, how He transformed our lives, how He'd forgiven us, how He broke addiction. We're so passionate, we can't stop telling people. Year two, it slips down and three, but by the time it gets to year eight, we're done. Because it doesn't move us anymore. You know, I, even as a pastor, I fell into that graph that day. You see, we've got to still be moved with compassion. Still move. The quickest way out of faith is to count your own battles. Someone needs to hear that. The quickest way out of faith is to count your own battles. So many people we love dearly have fallen away from God simply because of their battles. I just wish life was a, just a season of blessing from start to finish. But Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. This is not new. Jesus said it. But take heart. I have overcome. So we're going to finish with this. So Jesus was emotionally low, yet he was still moved with compassion. Well, the question I have is why? 
How can you still be moved with compassion when you don't feel it? This is what the Holy Spirit showed me. Because someone in life is always going through more than me. I think Jesus in that day, that crowd of 5,000 people, he thought, there's probably someone that day that's going through more than him. I know he just lost his cousin and it was brutal, but maybe there was a mum out there who just lost their child. And news would spread fast in that culture. Maybe, maybe joy, Jesus, Jesus saw a single parent that day who was struggling to feed their five or six kids. He knew that day that something had to get him out into the field because someone in that crowd was going through more than they do. You know, sometimes we've got to come to church not just for the sake of us, but for the sake of others. Because when I see people in this crowd and you've been beaten up with the battles of life, yet your hands are still lifted and you're saying, bless God in the sanctuary. Man, it does something to me. It does something for me. I see people and you've gone through it and you've been beat up, yet you're still in the game. And I'm thinking, man, if Phil and Lucina are still going, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. So we keep going, we keep loving, we keep leading, we keep turning up, we keep showing compassion. Being a Christian isn't a career, it's not a fad, it's not a trend. Being a Christian is a call. We are called to this life for the rest of our lives. In 1990, I made a decision to become a follower of Jesus and there is no turning back. We're not in this for fame, we're not in this for fortune, we're not in this for notoriety. We're in this because God's called us. And we're here to point people to the greatest treasure on earth, which is Jesus. Life, ministry is simply battles and blessings. Some days like today is a blessing. I feel so blessed to be here, but I'm not naive enough to know the phone could ring at any point and your blessing can turn into a battle overnight. But what do we do? We follow the template which Jesus gave us. We go to the Father. We walk in our anointing. And we stay moved with compassion. Come on, why don't we give God some praise today? I want us to stand together. and We're going to sing out this song, Bless God. For some of you, you couldn't sing it when we first came in because the battle got to you. The battle kept your hands down. But I want to encourage you today, even if you're in the heat of battle, even if you've lost your job this week, even if you're feeling lonely, you're feeling worn down by life, I want us to lift up holy hands to Jesus. I want you to lift up those hands right now all across this room. You might say, why do I need to lift up my hands? Do you know, because every fingerprint is different which means when you lift your hands, you are lifting unique worship to God today. It's unique. It's unique. Come on, let's sing this out. Hallelujah. Bless God. In the battle, bless God. Hallelujah. Bless God in the Bless God in the fields of plenty. Bless God in the darkest valley. Every chance I get, I'll bless your name.
Right now, if God is speaking to you, you're in the battle. You've been in the battle, but something in you is rising up today saying, I'm sticking in there. I'm not giving up on my kids. Right now, they're away from God, but I'm not giving up. We're in the battle with the kids. I've been out of work for so many months and I kind of quit. I've given up. But something in you is rising up today to say, God, you can get me through this battle. You've given up, but today something is saying to rise again. Just lift up your hand right now. You're in the battle, but you're saying, God, I'm coming back. The fight, it's fight back Sunday. Today, thank you, Jesus. God is inviting us to come. It's great that corporately we get to come today to the Father. But tomorrow there is no, there is no band at home. There is none of this. It's just you and God. And I want to encourage you tomorrow to find that remote place, that secret place. For some of you, you've drifted from the secret place. God is calling you back. The greatest intimacy you can have is with Jesus. And He will speak to you and He will show you. People say to me all the time, John, I prayed once and nothing happened. Well, I went to the gym once and nothing happened. It's about consistency. It's about just showing up, even when your feelings are saying don't. Remember, we've got to keep going about doing good, even when we feel bad. So step one this week is we're going to come to the Father. Who's going to come to the Father this week? And then we're going to keep walking in our anointing. We're going to just keep walking in it. Right now, we're in the battle, but we're just going to keep taking a step forward every day. We're going to keep taking a step forward. There is a blessing coming, but you've got to stay in the battle. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon you and He has anointed you. You are anointed for your tough days. You're anointed for the battle. You're anointed when the chips are down. You're anointed when there's no money in the bank. You're anointed when there's no one around. You're anointed to keep doing good even when you're feeling bad. And then today, God stir me again with compassion. Oh God, I pray it still moves us. Pray we don't just come to church and tick the I've been to church box. But this week, I'm committed to sharing my faith. I'm committing to helping someone. I'm committing to being stirred and moved with compassion. This is no longer about me. My salvation is secure. I know where I'm heading, but there is a lost world out there. And even when Jesus was at an emotionally low place, He kept showing compassion. If you're committed to showing compassion this week, I want you to lift your hand right now. Father, we're committed this week to walking with you. We're committed to keeping going in the anointing, Father, and we're committed, Lord, to showing compassion to a lost world. Father, we're sorry when we got so caught up in us. And we know that day in that field that you went out there because you knew that someone was in a worse place than you and it stirred you to action. So Lord, however tough it is in life right now, however tough it is at work, Lord, you would use us, Father God, to bring hope and bring the love of Jesus. You've called us to be salt and light. May we bring out the God flavors in our worlds this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hillsong Church, keep going about doing good, even when you're feeling bad. I believe. There is a new, there is a new anointing for Lucinda. There is a new blessing on this house. We've been through a battle, but there is a blessing season on its way in Jesus' name. Let me just pray for one more group of people before I hand back. Maybe you came for the first time today to church and you could relate to some of that. Maybe not all of it. Maybe some of it was a bit churchy. We get that. Some of us have been coming along so much long we forgot what it's like to come for the first time. Maybe this was your first time in church. You're like, man, I can feel something different in the atmosphere. This isn't good vibes. This is Jesus. It's the presence of Jesus. People talk to me all the time, I get good vibes at your church. There's no good vibes at Soul Church. You're feeling the presence of Jesus. It's Jesus that transforms us. And Jesus is here today. For those watching online, Jesus is right there in your bedroom. He's out there with you in the garden. He is everywhere and He wants a relationship with you. 
And we never conclude a service at Hillsong Church without giving you the opportunity to receive his love, his forgiveness, and his grace. I meet people all the time. They say to me, John, I'm not good enough to come to your church. I'm not good enough to be forgiven. I say to them, hey, you're in good company because none of us are. The Bible says for all have sinned, for all have fallen short. We've all messed up. We've all made mistakes. But it's not about what we've done wrong today. It's about what Jesus did right on our behalf. So we haven't come to church today to get beat up. We've come for the Holy Spirit to transform us. And so today, whatever state you're in, maybe you've been coming for a while, but you've never made that decision to give Jesus your life. Well, today, this is your moment. Maybe you're watching online. Wherever you are, whether you're in person in the room, whether you're watching virtually right now, this is an opportunity to receive the love and forgiveness of heaven. No one is too far gone. No one is too far gone today. I'd love every, if you're a Christian, would you just close your eyes and just begin to pray quietly? That You're saying, John, that's me. John, you are speaking to me today. I want to receive the forgiveness and love of Jesus. He's right here. He wants to give you a new start, a new beginning. I'm simply going to count to three. All over this room, from the left to the right, on the floor, up onto the tiered seating, those online. Here's what I want you to do. When I get to three, just slip up your hand, just long enough and high enough so I can see it. I'd love to pray for you. Christians praying quietly. This is a holy moment where people are going to make their peace with God. One, God loves you. Two, would you have the courage right now to respond to his love? Three, just slip up your hand all over this room, nice and high. God bless you. 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 God bless you on my left, on my right. God bless you. Good on you, sir. God bless you. Many, many people, you can put your hands down. We're going to say this prayer out loud together. Father God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. Right now, I receive your love and your forgiveness. I'm sorry for living life my own way. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Wash me clean. From this day forward, I am now a child of God. Amen. Amen. Would you congratulate everyone who said that prayer? It's the greatest decision you'll ever make. Pastor Phil will give you some instructions from here, but I want to say it's been an honor and a privilege. I encourage you to keep doing good in life. Keep doing good this week, even when you're feeling bad. God bless you. Thanks, John. Come on, can we really thank John and also Chantel? Such a blessing and such a great, encouraging, challenging word. I love it. And uh, these guys are building an incredible church in Norwich in the UK. And the building literally is a miracle story. Um, in, In the UK to have built what they have. And Lucinda and I were there when they opened it. So... Uh, Well done to you guys. You are leading the charge, bringing, I believe, a new generation of of leaders in in the UK. And uh, you you guys are more than just building a great church in Norwich. You're having an impact from what you're doing there around the world. And so we want to encourage you to keep going, building what God's called you to. We are cheering you on and you're incredible leaders and we just love you dearly. And uh, yeah, well done. Can we just congratulate them one more time? And John is chaplain for a team called the Norwich Canaries. They were in the Premier League, and now they're not. But maybe they will be. Battles and blessings, John, that's right. Souls, not goals. That's what, that's their motto. It's been John's... Anyway, we better keep going. Hey, if you um, prayed that prayer at the end and were like, I I really want to know Jesus, I want to follow God, um, we want to give you a gift. It's a Bible, just like this one. And so as you leave, uh, we've got people holding these. And uh, if you'd let us know, um, you know, if you grab one of these Bibles and fill in your details, we'll be able to help you on this spiritual journey that you've begun with that prayer. 
that prayer is the beginning of this spiritual journey. And we're a church family, and we just want to help you with that. And if you made that decision, you've joined us online or one of our other locations, we've got these available online. Let us know in the chat, and we'll send something to you electronically. But one more time, can we congratulate everybody? Um, 